Brethren, we want to start a new teaching series today that is titled New Beginning. New Beginning. Take note of the title. It is New Beginning. I want us to start by looking at something that Jesus said, I believe, in John chapter 8. John, John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The word of God <laughs> is recorded in the Bible. The word of God is true. And sometimes there is the argument about is truth relative or absolute. Well, you can understand where those who make those arguments are coming from or where they are trying to take us to. The Bible says, forever, O God, your word is settled in heaven. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said, not a jot of this word shall fail, shall fall to the ground without all being fulfilled. Beloved, if we can live by the word of God, as God has intended it to be, we will have what God has promised. The problem is that Many of us don't want to live by the word of God. And so we run helter skelter looking for quick fix. Why am I saying this? It is again to remind us that this platform, our focus and objective here is to make simple, clear, and available the pathway to eternal life. It is a platform the Almighty God has raised up for us to hear his undiluted word and be built up in faith so we can have a victorious life as Christians. And that brings me to a message or the word that uh, E.W. Kenyon shared. He wrote that uh, article in his uh, Herald of Life in 1950, 1950, where he titled it, Faith in Your Own Faith, Faith in Your Own Faith. Before this, he had also spoken on faith in my own faith. So many people want to live by the faith of others. While there is sufficient faith in others, I mean that people have developed faith in God. God, by his spirit, has helped many to develop faith. Like if you read the Bible, you will hear a man like Stephen. The Bible says he was full of faith. We have spoken on the categories of faith here. Yes, so there are people who have great faith. There are people who are full of faith. So while they can make a lot of impact. God's desire is for you, for me, for all of us to build our faith, to develop faith, to be strong in faith so we can live a victorious life. So the purpose of this meeting and this particular teaching is for you to learn to live the victorious life. New beginning, part one. It's what we want to look at today. While I've said that, I know not many people are willing and ready to do what is required to get the result that is available to you, available to me in the word. Remember Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Jesus said, it is written. And he was quoting um, Deuteronomy chapter 8. 
uh, verse 3. Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Every word. And so, brothers and sisters, the word of God is very important. There is nothing that was made that was made without the word. Everything was made by the word and through the word. And God today still expects us to live by the word. I know this may be hard for some people. In fact, I think it was Thomas Edison that said that 5% of people, only 5% of people think, and the other 5% think that they think, and the rest will rather die than think. So there are many people who don't want to Go deeper to know the word and live by the word. But I want you to be different. So the objective of this meeting and this particular teaching is that you may be built up, that you may have the keys to live the victorious life that God has given you to live, given me to live. New beginning, part one. We want to take our text from Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 and 28, and Matthew chapter 19, verse 8. I'll read Genesis chapter 1, verses 28 and 27, and then we'll go to Matthew chapter 19. Genesis 1. 27 and 28. So I read. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them. 28. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Matthew chapter 19, verse 8. If you're there, read it for me. It says, he said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, permitted you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. Thank you. God bless you. From the beginning, it was not so. New beginning. And so here, Jesus was addressing a very specific matter. But he opened our eyes, or he has opened our eyes to understand something beyond just what was being discussed here. And so what was happening here, if you step back and read from verse 7 of that Matthew chapter 19, he said, then they said to him, why then did Moses command to give a certificate of divorce and to put her away? He said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, permitted you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. This makes us to understand that there are many things that are happening in our lives. Many things that we see in the world today. In fact, we even practice it as the basis of reality, which is why some people talk about whether truth is relative or absolute. But I want to remind us again that the word of God is true. God is true. And the truth of God is absolute. The word of God is absolute. 
The problem is with us. It is never with God. And so here, people lived in assumption. They lived thinking that what they practiced at that time was what God has ordained to be. But Jesus, the one who came from heaven, the one who knows all things, opened their eyes of understanding and said, in the beginning, it was not so. So new beginning, brothers and sisters, connotes that there was a beginning. That's a starting point. There was what? A beginning. New beginning means there was a beginning. And that's why we are not talking about a new beginning. We are talking about the new beginning. Hallelujah. Of course, inside there is a new beginning. So, new beginning means that there was a beginning. There was a beginning. But what happened to that beginning? What happened to that beginning? That's question one. Question two is, how was that beginning? How was that beginning? This is what we want to explore. New beginning. So there was a beginning. How was that beginning? What happened to that beginning that requires us to have a new beginning? Then what is this new beginning? Let me recollect us again that this teaching is flowing from the teaching that God Almighty helped us to go through last month in understanding the divine jubilee, the divine jubilee. That we, through Jesus Christ, have come to the divine jubilee. We saw that the law of Jubilee, that the law of Jubilee had blessings commanded by law of God. And once Jubilee was announced every 50 years, the law took effect. Today, in Christ Jesus, the divine Jubilee, God has announced the blessings that must take effect in our lives. And so we're talking about beginning to walk in that blessing. And that's what we mean by new beginning. Glory be to God. So let's examine a bit further, and we will reconnect with that statement I have just made. New beginning. I said it means there was a beginning. But something must have happened to that beginning. Something may have altered that beginning. Something may have mad, manipulated that beginning. That makes us to require a new beginning. As we have just seen in that example in Matthew chapter 19, verses 7 and 8, the people lived and assumed that it was okay to issue a certificate of divorce to any woman and just tell her, here is the certificate, be gone. But Jesus said, in the beginning, it was not so. I want to challenge you, brothers and sisters, that there are so many things in your life, so many things in my life, so many things in the world today that this word Jesus said applies to. In the beginning, it was not so. So what is it 
And how was it in the beginning? That's where we want to get back to. Because through Jesus Christ, a divine jubilee, we have been brought into this divine freedom, divine liberty, divine salvation, divine prosperity, divine health, anything you can think of as God intended it to be in the beginning. So let's look at those scriptures again in Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 and 28 that we read. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. 28, then God did what? God blessed them. Say to yourself, God blessed me. God has blessed me. God has blessed me. That's how it was in the beginning. I'll just read a few verses down. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, what? Be fruitful. That's God's order for man, for you, for me. From the beginning, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. You have a part to play in the events of the world. To fill it, to subdue it. And then he continued, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Let's read 29 and 13, 31, because there's something there. And God said, see, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit, whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. 30. Also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the earth, and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food. And it was so. And it was so. Take note of that word again. Remember in Matthew chapter 19, verse 8, Jesus said, in the beginning it was not so. Here we see that in the beginning, it was so. Whatever God said, it was so. So what changed it? <laughs> what changed it? What was it? What was so in the beginning? If you can discover what was so in the beginning in your life and for your life, I tell you, it shall be so. Hallelujah. It shall be so. Nothing can alter it. Verse 30 said, after God announced, the Bible says, and it was so. And it was so. It will be so in your life today. It will be so in your life in this month. It will be so in your life and in my life for the rest of this year and all the days of our lives. It shall be so in the name of Jesus. So there are many things that was not so, which we are living in. There are many things in our lives which is not as it ought to be. So, if you can discover, as is recorded in the Word of God, the unfailing Word of God, the infallible Word of God, what was so, it shall be so to you. And if you also can't discover what was not so? And you say, let it go. It must be changed. It will be so unto you. It will be changed, which means it will also not be so unto you. There are many examples, I believe, your heart, your mind is already picturing what we are in for. And 
you can already see many things that are not or ought not to be the way they are. And we categorize them as those things that belong to it was not so in the beginning. Let's continue to read verse 31 then. Verse 31, Genesis chapter 1, we are still there. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. You can make three categorical points from here. Point number one, fact four, let's make four. Point number one in verse 27. There is the image of God in you, in me, that God created us with. There is the purpose of God, that God created you, created me, created us. There is a purpose. Number two, that purpose of God is blessed, is a blessing. There is a blessing in God's purpose for you, for me. God has blessed us. And you can expand that blessing to all the dimensions mentioning there, to be fruitful, to multiply, to have dominion, to fill the earth, to subdue it. By the way, it was the earth. It is the earth till now, not to subdue man. Man, that's one of the deviations. The departure of man has been to subdue another man. There is war going on now all over the world. In the beginning, it was not so. That is not God's original intention for man to subdue another man, to kill and maim another man. No, it was to subdue the earth. We are to partner together in exploring the wonderful things God has stored up in this world for us. To enjoy it together because it is more than enough for everyone. So God has blessed mankind, has blessed us. That's point number two. Point number three, whatever God has said concerning mankind was so. It was so. It happens as God has said it in the beginning. And point number four, and it remains so till today. So the problem is, as we have said before, man has departed from living by the word of God. And so we are talking about new beginning is coming back to live according to the word of God. It's coming back to live according to the provisions of God. It's coming back to live in that divine life that God has made available to you, to me, or for you and I to live. Point number four, we see here that everything God has done concerning man was very good. It was very good. So, new beginning is about coming back to live in this life that God Almighty has made as God intended it to be. That image of God, the purpose of God for your life, for my life, the blessings of God for your life, for my life, the word of God being fulfilled, it is so unaltered. No matter what the circumstance and situation is, it shall be fulfilled because God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. As he said it in the beginning, and it was so, it remains so in your life today, if only you can believe. 
And the cost of 0.123, everything about you, everything about me, everything about us, must be and shall be very good. Let's examine a few things. We talk about that new beginning means there was a beginning. And we ask the question, then what changed? What was altered? What altered? What marked that beginning, requiring new beginning? In Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1, you remember verse 1? The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God created the heavens and the earth, brothers and sisters. There is no other theory that can justify the existence of the heaven and the earth. I know man is exploring Mars. I remember the word the Spirit of God gave to me the first time the um, uh, robot that was being sent to Mars was being launched. If I remember clearly, I think I was in the US then. And while that expedition was going on, I received a very clear word. I won't say it now. I, I think I've said it before, but I won't repeat it here. And the only thing is just remember what the book of Daniel said. And also the proverb, Proverbs, I uh, believe the teacher says in Ecclesiastes, oh, vexation, vexation of the soul and of the spirit of man. But it's good to explore. It's good to explore. As we heard there, fill the earth and subdue it. But in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth and gave the earth for man to dwell in. I think that's enough word. <laughs> and if you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of this earth that God has created you, created me, created us to dwell upon. We'll leave that at that. In John, first John, uh, John chapter one, John chapter one, verse one, talking about in the beginning. In John chapter one, verse one, the Bible says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. Verse 2, he was in the beginning with God. Verse 3, all things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. Verse 4, in him was life. And the life was the light of man. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Who is this word of God that was in the beginning and by whom all things were made? Look at verse 14 with me, and you will be so clear without any doubt who. Is the word of God that was in the beginning by whom all things were made. John chapter 1 verse 14, read it with me. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory and the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth. Who is this word that was in the beginning? His name is Jesus Christ. Undoubtedly, he is Jesus Christ. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. 
And without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. This is the light that lights everyone, every man coming into the world. Your life is through Jesus Christ, the word of God. And so new beginning is being restored to how God has ordained it to be. <clears throat> and that's why, why you must understand that teaching, the divine jubilee. You must be able to put down in those eight headlines and much more all the provisions of God for your life through Jesus Christ. Because in the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. How did God make the heavens and the earth? John chapter 1 gives us the, the detail, the revelation, the ex exposition. And if we come back to Genesis chapter 1, Look at verse 3. It says, Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And it was so. That's what this means. God said, Let there be light. And it was so. What is it that God has said? should be in your life as it was in the beginning, which has been altered, which has been marred, which has been destroyed. Jesus Christ, the divine jubilee, has brought us to the new beginning. This is what we're talking about. Are you ready to start this new beginning life? It's only possible in Christ Jesus. And so we're going to look at it in detail, what God has provided for us from the beginning that we must enjoy now. Just for an example, in the beginning when God made man and said it is very good, very good, very good. There was no sickness. There was no disease. If you go and read, you see how many years people lived before they died. It was the disobedient and sin that brought sickness and disease. But thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ, the divine jubilee, God has announced new beginning, no more sickness, no disease, no affliction, no infirmity for us who are in Christ Jesus. Glory be to God. But are you ready to believe God and to live? In that word of God, man shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So Jesus, as recorded in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, if anyone be in Christ. He is a new creation, new creation, new, new beginning. All that God meant for you as human being through Jesus Christ, the divine jubilee, you have been restored to it. You have been recreated, new creation. And it says, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Oh, I love this. I love this. This is why he is the Alpha and Omega. Jesus is the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end or ending. The Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. Revelation chapter 1 verse 8. Revelation chapter 1 verse 17. Revelation chapter 22, verse 13. We will explore this. 
He is the Alpha and Omega. So if you come to Jesus and you allow the word of God operate in your life, you will enjoy the new beginning. It is never too late to start. That's why God gave us his son, Jesus, so that we can have new beginning. New beginning of his power. New beginning of divine health. New beginning of everything God Almighty has provided. As Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 and 28, and all the way to 31, that we just uh, explained, said, and God created us in his own image. In his image, and God blessed us. Beloved brothers and sisters, by the divine jubilee, that is Jesus Christ, we have been brought into this blessing of God. Not like the law of jubilee that was every 50 years. We have been brought into the new covenant to live by the word of God. And every word of God must work in our lives today, tomorrow, all through this year, and throughout our days here on earth. So the word leaves. The word is our reality if we can believe. We shall enjoy the provisions of this new beginning. Whatever God didn't ordain in your life, it was not so. And so we'll be exploring those assumptions that we are living with, which was not so, and it shall not be so, but we will be restored to God's uh, plan, grand plan for our lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God bless you, brothers and sisters. This is where we want to uh, pause and we want to pray. I want you to pray with me. Two prayer points, two prayer points. Very sharply, you have heard the word. It was not so. Raise your voice to heaven, and I believe the Spirit of God has been pointing you to things that are in your life, which was not so from the beginning. Raise your voice to heaven and pray with me. And say, Heavenly Father, I surrender myself to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word of God, the living Word. Lord Jesus, I come to you the one by whom all things were made, I come to you. The one who is the divine jubilee that gives me the new creation, the new beginning, I come to you. I surrender my life to you, Lord Jesus. Tell him, Lord Jesus, you have said he that comes to you, you will in no wise cast out. And so I thank you for accepting me right now. And now I ask Almighty God, restore me to everything you have ordained for my life through your son, Jesus Christ, my Lord, my Savior. And now I ask Almighty God, whatever was not so in the beginning, whatever you didn't create to be in my life, let it go now, let it go. Let it go. Oh, let it end. Take it away from my life. Let it be terminated in the name of Jesus Christ. In fact, I reject whatever God didn't make to be in my life. Whatever was not so from the beginning, according to God's will, plan, and purpose in my life. Sickness was not so in the beginning. God didn't create man to be sick. And I thank God by the stripes of Jesus, he has restored me to divine health. And so I receive divine healing right now. I receive divine health. And I command sickness and disease, go away, you are a stranger unto me. Affliction of any form, you are a stranger in my body. Go ahead and pray. Speak with me. You are a stranger 
It was not so in the beginning. You were not in God's original plan for my life. So you cannot stay in my life. Go! Let health, divine health, the divine life in Christ Jesus. Oh, the divine jubilee. The one through whom God has given me abundant life. Let that life break forth, break forth, break forth in my spirit, soul, and body, body, soul, and spirit. In every aspect of my life, let the life of God break forth, break through, manifest in me as it was in the beginning, as God intended, ordained it to be. Pray with me now and confess and say, Heavenly Father, Thank you for giving me new beginning of divine health. All things of sickness and diseases have passed away through Jesus Christ. And from now, from today, I walk in divine health. I receive my healing and divine health in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And for you, Who's still struggling with sin? Tell him, Father, forgive me all my sins. Almighty God, and through Jesus Christ, I receive new beginning of walking in righteousness and living a victorious life that pleases God. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. And in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. This is the introduction, and this is where we'll stop. But I'll just allow a few minutes in case you have a question or anything you want to say uh, or add. Feel free, open the line. Maybe you have a question, maybe uh, something resonated with you. I always like to hear. So please go ahead. Pastor, thank you so much for the word of God. And you've really helped us and me in particular to see that our God does not change. His original plan for his children has not changed. So if that is true, if that is so, we have every hope that our God will do whatever we uh, want him to do for us. So it has really given me a clear vision of who my father is, very um, trustworthy, very faithful. Yes. He keeps his words. Yes, that's Whatever that's, that's... he says will come to pass. So uh, my prayer is God should help us to walk with him, yield to his original plan for us mm -hmm. so that we will receive all that blessings yes. that Christ came to restore us to. Hallelujah. So thank you so much. This has been thank you. Uh, a well um uh, well, should I say, I wouldn't say well planned, well delivered uh, uh, word of God. So God will help us to walk with him so that we will benefit from that original promise and purpose that he has for me and all his children here on earth. Thank you. And Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. All right. I think she's uh, said uh, what resonates with uh, most of us, I would imagine, resonates with me as well. So we're going to um, uh, pause here. Now, this is not, you know, I keep reminding us, the Bible says it's not the hearers. That's why many of us are running everywhere, looking for uh, what, who will do one thing for us and all the others in this faith life. 
as I said earlier, yes, people have developed faith and they will be able to make impact on you. However, to sustain that impact, you have to learn to live by the word of God. You have to learn to develop your faith. I have no doubt there is enough faith on this platform. And as we are taking this teaching, the work that Jesus promised us, the manifestations, they are going to manifest. In this month, this is a special month. I am absolutely convinced. First week, first week, December, we're going to have a program. I was just praying this morning, and I again, I spoke it out. I said, well, I don't know exactly, but first week, December, we're going to... I was just praying for this meeting, and then the program was just laid bare in front of me. Uh, so, of course, such leading, that level of um, gift is meant to bless the body. So it will bless everyone that is connected with it. However, it's, not, it's for you to also be able to um, ask God the gift he has given to you. And when it comes to believing the word of God, God expects every one of us to live by his word. And the word of God will come true in your life, will come true in my life. And when you have settled that the word of God is on change, is reality, God created this whole earth with, by his word. And by his word, as he has spoken, he will do all things in your life. And don't forget some of the word is telling you what to do. So it's not the doers, that's what I'm saying. I mean, they hear us only, but they hear us and do us. So we must hear and do. So what am I going to is we had, we had an assignment. That assignment now has to be brought back. For you to articulate the Blessing in the divine jubilee, developing from the eight headlines that we mentioned under the law of jubilee, taking that into the divine jubilee. And I showed all the example. I say, for example, in the law of jubilee, there was nothing clearly about divine health, healing. But in the divine jubilee in Christ Jesus, Healing is clearly stated, it's clear, it's yours, it's mine to enjoy, to be healed, to live in health. So, that, so this is the assignment now, because some of us, I, again, I will keep emphasizing, is when we fail to do what we are supposed to do, then we start depending on the faith of others. Faith in your faith is what God wants you to live by. Because remember, the just shall live by his faith. But my faith, which God has helped me to develop because it's God's, it's all God, should impact me, impact everyone around me. And your faith, which God helps you to develop, should impact you and impact everyone. So this is how God wants us to live. So both faith in your faith and faith in my faith. It cannot be faith in my faith and no faith in your faith. That's where the trouble is. Because if it is only faith in my faith, I will not be there all the time. And sometimes my faith may not even carry you. <laughs> but faith in your faith means you're totally dependent on God and you understand how to tap into the new beginning. God bless you, brothers and sisters. And we're going to continue going deeper. So like I said, that assignment, we have to connect it and now take it on. That's one. Number two is this. What are the things in your life that are not supposed to be so? In the beginning, it was not so. Some are the things that we are doing. Some are the things external to us. In fact, put down 
things in your own life that are not supposed to be so, things around you which are external to you that has influence in your life that in the beginning was not so. Put down those. So we'll bring these two together and we will deal with them. We will treat them. I hope we can even get to a point of discussing some of those, especially some of the external things that are not so, which are influencing and affecting our lives. This is what we want to explore according to the word of God. God bless you, brothers and sisters, and have a blessed week. Bye-bye.